Hey guys, this is Candle, and welcome to a new collection update, a new gaming pickups video. It's been a little while since my last one, and uh, I've got a decent stack now, so it's it's time. Uh, I actually tried to record this uh, a couple weeks ago, and ended up realizing I had the wrong mic set up, so the audio was terrible, and I decided, you know, there were a couple things uh, coming out that I wanted uh, to get, so I decided to hold off on that. First off, uh... I mentioned in the last video that I hadn't been able to get my hands on an Xbox Series X yet and how tough and difficult it was to do. Uh, within a couple days of that video going live, uh, I was able to actually secure one from Best Buy. So you can see the, the boxes up on the top there right now on display. And I'm actually really, really enjoying it. Uh, it is quite a bit more powerful than the uh, Xbox One X I'd been using previously, which again was more powerful than the Xbox One. And it plays all of the uh, uh, Xbox One games, all of the Xbox, I guess, Series X, optimized for Series X games, uh, as well as everything that was already in the back catalog, you know, backwards compatibility for uh, Xbox One with regards to Xbox 360 and the original Xbox. Um, but, I ended up picking up a few games as well. Uh, one of the games I was really interested in playing when I first got it was The Medium, which is kind of a survival horror type game, uh, kind of a throwback. And it had music from Akira uh, Yamaoka, who was the uh, uh, main composer for most of the Silent Hill franchise. And unfortunately, that game is digital only as of right now. There is no physical release for it, which really kind of sucks because as you can see from the wall behind me, I collect. <laughs> I mean, that's what the, the whole point of this video is, is to show off things I've added to my collection. So I thought about, you know, just purchasing that. And then I realized, you know what? It's been a long time since I've had Xbox Live Gold. Uh, the medium is on Game Pass. Why not just go ahead and get Game Pass Ultimate? Yeah, it's more expensive than Xbox Live Gold on its own. It's like 15 bucks a month, which is like super expensive uh, compared to like other streaming services uh, and things like that are similar to this for... TV and movies instead of just games, but it's a huge collection of games that gives me immediate access to it, and uh, I have downloaded a few things on there, but I haven't really played them, most of them yet. I played through the medium. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I also downloaded a few uh, EA games since they, uh, EA Play is now part of uh, Game Pass Ultimate, so I downloaded like Fee and Sea of Solitude and Need for Speed Heat, but I haven't actually played them yet. I also downloaded Tetris Effect Connected, which I haven't tried yet either. Uh, I already have Tetris Effect on the PS4, but I haven't tried the uh, Xbox version, which is has uh, new features and stuff like that. So I haven't tried that yet. However, I did also pick up some physical uh, games for my Series X. One of the first ones I got was a game that was also on Game Pass, but I decided to, to get it because I, this was a franchise I already knew I enjoyed, and I definitely knew I was going to want a physical copy of this at some point for my collection. Because the thing with Game Pass is that... Uh, you don't actually own those games. You know, you are subscribing to have access to them, but you don't own them. So if they ever want to, they can pull a game from that and you can't do anything about it. Now, granted, uh, the games that I bought that are on Game Pass are Microsoft games, so it's unlikely that they'll ever be pulled from the service, but you never know. And one of the reasons why is... Uh, why you never know is because one of the games I got was Forza Horizon 4. Now, I remember playing Forza Horizon 2 and 3. There are certain DLCs that are no longer available for those games. Uh, I think specifically because of licensing issues with the cars and everything in it. So you, you never know. Microsoft at some point might have to pull Forza Horizon 4 from uh, the uh, Game Pass service. But the reason why I got this, this is an, an Xbox One game, not a Series X game, but... It got a day one patch with the launch of the uh, uh, Series X to bump it up to, I believe, native 4K and 60 frames per second. And, you know, it's, re it's really fun. It's quite a, quite enjoyable. In in past Forza Horizon games, uh, let's see, uh, in Horizon 1, it was the U.S. Horizon 2 was Europe, specifically France and Italy. Horizon 3 was Australia. Horizon 4 is the U.K., specifically uh, Great Britain. I think it's more in and around the the uh, border between Scotland and uh, and England, uh, specifically because I'm pretty sure Edinburgh is one of the uh, places you can go to in here. It's it's obviously much smaller than the real life city is, but uh, and that's the capital of Scotland, and I think that is. I mean, it's not too far away from the border uh, within the the confines of a game and so on. So, but. Um, 
the cool the the real big thing about horizon 4 was the changing of the seasons you know they had in previous games yeah they you had like rain and stuff like that you had day night effects stuff like that but this one you actually have changing seasons where it's basically the same map four different times but in each of the different seasons you have uh the you start off in spring i believe no sorry you start off in uh in summer I want to say it's summer or fall. I don't remember which, but you start off in one of those. So in, in like summer, like everything's nice and green. Uh, there's not too much rain or anything like that. In the fall, you've got a little bit of rain, but the leaves are turning. Winter, you know, everything's cold and icy and snowy. In the spring, you know, everything's getting green again, but it's all very rainy and stuff like that. And you kind of cycle through uh, various seasons as uh, as you progress through the game. And unfortunately. This is also basically a live service game where there's not really a proper end to it. Once you get through the first round of seasons, you can basically change the seasons at will and you can just keep racing and racing and racing. And unfortunately, I don't really like that because there's not much to keep me invested, to keep me pushing forward beyond just, oh, clear the next race, clear the next race, clear the next race. And that's that's not enough for me. I much preferred, uh, you know... Um, you know, Horizon 2, where it was, oh, we're going to take you on a tour of the European countryside throughout the, the game. Or Horizon 3, where it's, oh, you're building up the the festival as you go along. You know, as you improve, you're, you're unlocking new hubs and improving them and stuff like that. I much prefer that than Horizon 4. But still, I, I really did enjoy my time with the game. Uh, definitely looking forward to the next one. Um... So far, they've only announced uh, Forza Motorsport, basically a non-numbered reboot of the uh, uh, track uh, portion of the franchise that I believe is probably going to still keep going the live service route. But those things, those they always have like championships to get, so there's like a definite end where you can say, okay, that's enough. I've, I've beaten the game. Whereas uh, there's also rumors now that there's going to be a, a Forza Horizon 5, and that might come before Forza Motorsport, which actually kind of makes sense. Well, actually, no, it doesn't make sense to me because normally they alternate back and forth between Motorsport and Horizon. Uh, ever since they started the Horizon, it's been like back and forth like every other year or so. And I'm pretty sure Horizon 4 was the most recent Forza release. So Motorsport would be the, the most likely one to be next. But either way, I don't know. Anyways, another game I picked up for the Xbox was Gears Tactics. This is another one that is on Game Pass. So I didn't need to pick this up and I wasn't going to for a good while because they're still selling physical copies of this brand new for 60 bucks. I do not believe this is a $60 game. Granted, this is one I haven't actually played yet, so it could be. But when I think of Gears, I think of, of third person uh, shooting and this is not that. You know, it's right in the name. It's it's a tactics game where it, it's squad based tactics, you know, turn based uh, it, it's kind of like, like XCOM or Final Fantasy Tactics or even like Fire Emblem a little bit in that respect. The only reason I picked this up was because I was able to get it at, uh, GameStop for $30, uh, used. So definitely glad to pick that up then because I am a, a fan of the, the Gears franchise and I do enjoy tactical games like this. So I am interested in looking at this at some point, but I just, I haven't had a chance yet, but this also brings up a few issues with me with regards to the way uh microsoft is handling the transition to the next generation and on one hand it's great on the other hand not so much uh it's mostly just nitpicking and, and annoyances for me like on the one hand it's great they're treating it like it's it's all one big generation like they're they're doing their whole uh, optimized for series x and s and smart delivery type thing where they can print out uh xbox one discs you pop it in your system and it recognizes oh this this is an xbox one disc but it's on a series x and there's a series x version available do you want to download the series x version you know we'll send that automatically to you uh, that way you get the best possible experience. And that's all great and everything, except for when it comes to branding the uh, actual cases. As you can see up top here, it just says Xbox, whereas Forza Horizon 4 says Xbox One. And it says Xbox One console exclusive. Up here it says, you know, Series X, Xbox One. That I don't mind. It's the fact that even, even having Xbox by itself up here, I don't really mind. It's the spine that's the problem. It literally just says Xbox on the spine, whereas Forza Horizon 4 says Xbox One. And they changed the logo a bit. And I would be all fine taking these games, setting them aside on my shelf. Except for the fact, especially considering like the, the ones that are like specifically made for the Series X that play best on Series X have this little badge in the corner here that says that. 
I'd be fine with that, except for the fact that that is not always the case. Uh, right before, let me grab it real quick. Right before the uh, uh, last summer, before the Xbox Series X launched, they started printing uh, games that uh, would be compatible with it. Like uh, Little Hope here uh, it says Xbox One, Xbox Series X. On the top, it says Xbox One. That's fine. On the side, it just says Xbox again. And again, this bugs the hell out of me because it ruins the branding. It's like we already had to deal with this on the PSP, which has two different sizes of, of, of logos uh, and everything. And I'll show that in a minute too. But uh, on the PSP and then the PS3 went like three or four different brandings uh, of logos on the on the spine and everything like that. And then look at, look at the Genesis. The Genesis is all over the place too. It's like, I like consistency. Yeah, sure, maybe do a, a certain thing if it's like a Platinum Hits or a Greatest Hits type thing or Player's Choice or whatever. But I like consistency, okay? And then the other problem is uh, a couple years ago, they started reprinting Xbox 360 games that were backwards compatible on the Xbox One. And they would put them in Xbox One cases, except it would be like the... Uh, the Gears Tactics case here, where it just said Xbox on the top and Xbox on the side. Because they were, again, 360 discs that were in Xbox One cases because they were compatible with the Xbox One. And it's just, it's one of those minor things that annoys the crap out of me. And and again, like I said, it's it's great, it's consumer forward that they're they're doing it to, to, to try to homogenize everything, to keep things going forward smoothly and easily. It just, it bugs the hell out of me as a collector. That's it. <laughs> But they did pick up one more uh, Xbox One game. I actually just got this yesterday as of this recording. And uh, I haven't spent too much time with it. But I, what I have spent, I really enjoyed. And that is the Mass Effect Legendary Edition. This is the original Mass Effect trilogy 1, 2, and 3. Completely remastered in full uh, 4K Ultra HD. Uh, native 4K on the, the Xbox Series X. And up to 120 frames per second, too. Um... Uh, I don't have a 120 FPS TV. I would have to hook it up to my computer monitor to get that. So I'm I'm settled wing for 60 FPS, but it's it's completely fine. But yeah, it is is great to have this. I am a huge fan of the Mass Effect franchise. Um, really, really enjoying this. Um, I've played through Mass Effect one probably like half a dozen times going through different permutations of everything. Mass Effect 2, probably maybe two or three times just to see like what the different endings were. Mass Effect 3, I only played through once when it came out because I, I was so disappointed by the way that game ended that I wasn't part of the huge backlash on the internet because I was all like, artistic integrity, this is the ending they wanted, so this is the ending we got, and that's it. But, uh, so I, I never actually replayed through the ending to see what the extended cut version of it was. So I am looking forward to seeing that. And this includes like pretty much all the DLC across the entire franchise. There are a couple pieces missing. Pinnacle Station uh, for at Mass Effect 1 is missing because of uh, data corruption. Like they lost the source code basically for it. Uh, and then like the uh, multiplayer and all that associated stuff uh, for Mass Effect 3 is also missing as well. But yeah, definitely interested in, in checking this out. Uh, also, this is a two-disc game. I, the other disc is in my Xbox right now, so this is disc two. Basically, the way this works is Mass Effect 1 is on disc one. Okay, so when you install it and you play it from disc one, it will ask uh, if you want to install Mass Effect 2 and 3. And if you do, it'll download a patch which will add those games and you know, unlock them, you know, get all the data. However, you can also install them, I believe, from disc two. I didn't quite get this working. I think it's because I'm on the Series X instead of the Xbox One. But, uh, so I, I just ended up downloading instead. But it's, it's great to have them physically on disc, even if it's like a separate second disc, uh, rather than uh, having it uh, as a download only, like, say, with Spyro, where Spyro 1 was on the, the disc, and uh, Spyro 2 and 3, there were only a couple levels on the disc, and then you had to download the rest as a patch. So, yeah, definitely definitely looking forward to playing through the rest of this. But beyond that, um, I also picked up a fair number of other things. Uh, about a month or two ago, we heard that Sony might be shutting down the 
PSN stores for PSP, uh, PS3, and PlayStation Vita. And uh, that is going to, when that eventually does happen, because it will happen. They, they since reversed their decision on the Vita and the PS3, but it will eventually happen. There's going to be a lot of games that shoot up in value because you can't get them any other way anymore. And already there's a lot of like PS1 games that are super expensive, but are only like 5 or $6 if you're getting them digitally through PSN on your PS3. That said, there was one game in particular I really, really wanted to get because there was a digital only component tied to it. And that is Final Fantasy X and X-2, the HD remaster on uh, PS Vita. And it's kind of hilarious that it calls it an HD remaster because the Vita is not capable of HD. The Vita uh, resolution is like 540, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, it's actually like 544, I think, P. Uh, and uh, so that is below 720p, which is the minimum to be considered HD. It is, however, higher than standard definition, which is 480p or, or uh, back in the era of uh, CRT TVs, it was 480 vertical lines or horizontal lines. Uh, so it is higher than the original, higher quality than the original PS2 release, but not by a great amount. However, the reason why I had to pick this up when I did, and this was back before they reversed their decision to close the Vita store, was because, just like I was talking about how uh, certain games now are only shipping components on the disc, and then you have to download the rest as a patch, uh, the actual cartridge for Final Fantasy X and X2 only has Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X-2 was included only as a DLC voucher, a download code. And so I basically, I had to make sure I get the, I got this brand new so that I could use that code to unlock it. So I did, and I ended up paying a little bit more than I, I really wanted to, a little bit more than I, I necessarily needed to, considering the current market value, but it was significantly less than what people were asking on, on eBay. I was looking around on eBay for a couple weeks, and people were asking like $70, $80 for something that really should only be, you know, a $30, $40 game right at this point. And then I found it on Amazon for, I think, $40 or $50. So I ended up getting it there instead. So I paid a little bit over what I wanted to, but not as much as like people really were expecting to, to get for it. And I'm, I'm glad to have this. Uh, that said, there is a Japanese version, I believe, that uh, has English language options on it. And in Japan, they actually split it up instead of trying to do a bundled release uh, like here in the West. They actually did, uh, they, they did it two different ways. They did it individually and then they did it as a dual pack where you actually had two cartridges, you know, uh, uh, two different cases, two cartridges. And so I might eventually track those down. But as of right now, the only uh, Final Fantasy game for the Vita I am missing that it has an official Western release is uh, World of Final Fantasy. So I need to get that at some point. However, that said, that wasn't the only Vita game I picked up. I also picked up Little Deviants. This was actually a uh, launch title for the Vita, and it made use of the front and rear multi-touch uh, pads for the Vita as well. I have not actually played this yet, so I don't really know how well it works. But basically, uh, if I remember correctly, you've got these these little... They're called deviants, but they're they're basically little ball minions, and you kind of roll them around and stuff like that. And you can use the the rear touchpad to poke up from underneath the screen to to help kind of move them around and stuff like that. So definitely glad to have that. But that's not the only digital or uh, the only Sony handheld games I got. I also got some PSP games. I expanded my PSP collection a bit. I got Loco Roco two. I have not touched this. I know this got a remaster on PS4 along with Loco Roco one. I am kind of interested in, in trying this out. It's kind of a weird uh, puzzle game, kind of. So definitely interested in looking at that. Uh, this one was an impulse buy because I thought it was something slightly different. Uh, Hot Shots Tennis Get a Grip. I thought this was a Hot Shots golf game. Uh, I just read the Hot Shots bit and didn't read that it was tennis. So I picked this up. It was only 5 bucks, so it wasn't that bad. The, one, the bad one that was the impulse buy was The Third Birthday which is the third Parasite Eve game. And the reason this is a bad impulse buy for me isn't because it's the third birthday. It's because I paid $45 for this, and it's it's the Japanese version. 
<laughs> I can't read Japanese and there is no English language option in this game. Like some of the, uh, some of the menus are in, in, in English, but most of it, uh, the bulk of it is in Japanese and like all of the voice dialogue is in Japanese. The subtitles are in Japanese. There's no English language option in this. And I was so ecstatic because to get this, cause it was pristine. It was complete. And then I got it home and flipped it over and realized it was Japanese, which really, really sucks because again, I can't read Japanese. So I ended up having to go on eBay and spend another $70 to get the English version, which is a little bit more than this thing is really worth right now. It's really worth like closer to like $60 to get it complete. And I'm missing like the, uh, I'm missing like a, an, an art card or something like that. The, the, maybe it's just a difference in the region, but the Japanese version included a couple, uh, couple playing cards basically. Yeah, Final Fantasy playing card game that, you know, has like Ayabrea, the main character, and stuff like that. And uh, so that was in the Japanese version, but it's not in the English version. At least not the copy I have, which kind of sucks. But other than that, you know, it has the manual. Uh, the box is, is pretty good. It's it's all completely English. It's correct region and everything. It's even got the, the MSRB rating. So definitely glad to add this to my collection. I'll play through it at some time. I still have yet to play through... Uh, Parasite Eve 1 and 2. And for those who aren't aware, Parasite Eve was uh, Squaresoft's answer to Resident Evil and Silent Hill back in the day. It was their attempt at a survival horror game, uh, basically from the, the masters of the RPG. So it's it's really, it's a survival horror RPG. And so uh, uh, Third Birthday is actually a bit more action-oriented, I believe, than uh, Parasite Eve uh, 1 or 2 were. But uh, beyond that, there were a few other things I got as well. Um... I mentioned in my Final Fantasy V Let's Play that I was planning on doing Final Fantasy VI next. Uh, I have since changed my mind. I am currently taking a break from Let's Plays. I did end up playing through Final Fantasy VI myself. I emulated it on my, on my uh, uh, PC because I wasn't entirely thrilled with the results I was getting on my TV through my Retron 5 at the time. But one of the things I was holding out on... Uh, was I really wanted to get a analog Super NT, which is an FPGA-based hardware-based uh, emulation for Super Nintendo games. Takes the original cartridges, uh, boots it up, uh, runs it all at, at up to 1080p. It's beautiful, guys. It is beautiful. But yes, I did get my hands on one. This is the classic edition, where it's it's themed and colored based on the uh, Super Nintendo colors in North America here. So it's, it's the gray and the purple. There's also a Super Famicom edition, which is themed after the European and Japanese uh, version colors. Then there's like uh, an all black edition as well. But yes, I was able to get my hands on this. This is actually the uh, controller adapter for my wireless Super Nintendo controller. But yes, very, very glad to have this. Uh, again, it takes cartridges very easily you know right through the center here plays uh super famicom and super nintendo cartridges because there's no actual difference in the uh connector like there is between famicom and nes and uh, but it gave me a reason to expand my super nintendo collection a little bit first off uh this comes preloaded with two digital games. Specifically, it comes preloaded with Super Turrican Director's Cut and Super Turrican 2. Now, the original Super Turrican was apparently going to be too large to fit on a Super Nintendo cartridge, so they had to cut it down significantly, re removing like quite a bit of content. And so the Director's Cut that's on here has like all that content restored and everything. Uh, and then they shipped it with a re reproduction box for the Director's Cut as well. It's, it's just an empty box. There's no actual cartridge or anything, which... Kind of sucks. Would have been nice if they included it, but uh, still, it's it's nice to have, you know, stick on a shelf and everything. Uh, I tried Super Turrican Director's Cut. Not entirely sure it's my cup of tea in terms of games. Kind of reminds me a bit of, of Contra, though. So if you like Contra, you might like Super Turrican to check that out. But beyond that, I did uh, add another game to my Super Nintendo collection, specifically Donkey Kong Country. Uh, I played through this one before. It's super challenging for me, but it is enjoyable. And uh, it's really good. Uh, I still have to play, uh, get and play uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 and 3, but it's, it's nice to have the original as well. And again, these, these things just uh, slot right, right in, just like that. So it, it's cartridges sit in like this, and it, it reads them perfectly too. Much better than the Retron 5 does. Uh, but still, definitely glad to have that. I also picked up another bit of uh, retro hardware. Uh, well, more correctly, retro upscaling hardware. I got a RetroTINK 2X Pro, and I got this a few weeks ago, 
uh, maybe maybe a month ago now, and uh, I, I didn't know there was a Retro Tink 5X Pro on the horizon, or I probably would have held out and gotten that instead, because the 5X you know, does higher quality and does it better than the Retro Tink 2X. But the Retro Tink 2X is still pretty good. It it basically takes your original um, uh, outputs, whether it's uh, the original you know yellow compo or, uh, composite cable, whether it's the RGB uh, component cables, or if it's S video, and upscales it, line doubles it, basically. Uh, from 240p and 480i to 480p, and it does deinterlacing, in, uh, deinterlacing as well, and outputs it via HDMI. So this is actually really good to have if you plan on doing like a lot of retro games on original hardware, but you also want to play it on an, uh, a modern TV and have it look decent, or if you want to record it for like YouTube or Twitch or stuff like that. So something like this is is pretty good to have. This is this was like 150 bucks at the time. I know the Retro Tink. Uh, 5x is significantly more expensive though it's like 275 so i'll probably get one of those eventually but for now i'm, I'm happy enough with this so definitely glad to have that uh but that's not the end because i got more oh yes indeed i got some n64 games as well these again i have not actually played these yet so but still i got uh excite bike 64 which is the only excite bike game i have now i don't have the original <laughs> so uh, actually, I take that back. I do technically own the original, but it is the 3D Classics remake on the uh, the 3DS. So it's, it's like the original NES game, but with 3D effects added in. So I, I do have that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Excite Bike 64, uh, Jet Force Gemini, which was from where Rareware, the people behind uh, uh, Banjo Kazooie and Conker's Bad Fur Day and Perfect Dark stuff like that. Actually. Uh, there's only a handful of Rareware games I'm missing now for the N64. Specifically, Perfect Dark, Conker's Bad Fur Day, Diddy Kong Racing, and I believe Blast Core. I think those are the only four I'm missing because I have uh, I have Banjo Kazooie, Banjo Tooie, Donkey Kong 64, Goldeneye, and now Jet Force Gemini. So I think those are the only ones I'm missing. I could be wrong. Uh, I'm just going based off of memory on what's included in. Uh, in rare replay. So I don't know if they included their entire N64 library minus DK64 and uh, uh, and Gold Knight because of licensing issues or not. But still, good to have it in my collection. And then I got one of the few RPGs that were ever produced for the N64, and that is Quest 64. I've heard mixed things about this. I've heard people who said it's good. I've heard people who said it's terrible. I have no actual idea. Eventually, I'm going to try it out and see for myself. Definitely glad to add it to my collection, though. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, I got one more old game that I wanted for years and actually passed up a chance back when it was still available at GameStop. It was $60 then, and now it's significantly more, or sorry, it was $20 then, and now it's significantly more. And that is F-Zero GX for the GameCube. Again, this is a game I have not played yet. I've heard great things about it. I really want to try it. I've enjoyed what I've played of the F-Zero games in the past. But those were specifically the Super Nintendo and Game Boy Advance versions. I've never played the GameCube or N64 ones. So definitely glad to have it. And I mean, it is complete too. The disc is in really good condition. It's got the full manual. Everything is here. So definitely glad to add this to my collection. Especially considering it's not all that cheap right now either. Uh, and then I also... I picked up a couple PC games as well. I did this while I was on vacation in April because I was getting them delivered by eBay or from eBay. And uh, one of them is a big box game. And those are a little bit tough for me to get where I am right now simply because uh, the only place to really get them reliably is eBay. People selling on eBay almost always ship exclusively through the uh, U.S. Postal Service. And the mailman does not have a key to my building. And these things are too big to sit in the mailbox. And my mailman is not willing to let them just sit outside because he doesn't know what these what's in these packages. And he he's seen packages that have sat for days and weeks and sometimes even months. And he's seen packages that were snatched within hours of him placing them. So... He just, he doesn't want to take the risk. He doesn't have a key to get into our building. So unless I can actually be there to meet him, uh, it's always a risk for me to try to get big box games off of uh, eBay and stuff. But I did finally get one I'd been, had my eye on and wanted for a long time. And that is Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. Now, I already have a copy of this in my collection. Uh, it is specifically just the jewel case version of it uh, because I bought it off of Amazon a couple years ago, a few years ago, and it was only like 20 bucks, I think, 
no, it might, it might have even been cheaper. It might have only been like $10, $15 at most. Uh, but it wasn't really that good on the description of what all was in, included. So I thought it was the, the big box version I was getting. And it just was the game and the dual case, uh, uh, jewel case. And uh, so finally I have the big box with the manual and everything uh, is in here. You know, I've got like the full, full manual and everything. Definitely glad to have this add it to my collection. I really, really love this game. Uh, it's probably my favorite Indiana Jones game. I need to get around to playing uh, Emperor's Tomb and Staff of Kings. Those are the only two I really haven't played yet of the the original adventures. Uh, I know there are other Indiana Jones games that are based on the movies uh, on other platforms, but uh, those are the only two I haven't played yet that are original adventures. And then I know uh, Bethesda is working on a, a, a new one as well. Not specifically Bethesda, but somebody under their umbrella. Uh, I believe it's Machine Head Games, the the people who did the Wolfenstein games. So definitely interested in what they're they're going on with, and definitely glad to have this as well. But that is not the only uh, PC game I got. I also got a small box PC game, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which is yes, it's a movie tie-in, but it is better th than it really has any right to be as a movie tie-in. I've wanted this game for years and years, ever since I played the demo as a kid after playing the through sorcerer's stone on pc and uh it's basically it's very it plays very similar to sorcerer's stone on pc it's just kind of bigger and and more to do and stuff like that so definitely glad to, to have this finally in my collection uh at some point i'll probably get the quidditch game and uh maybe prisoner of azkaban and then i'll probably stop on harry potter games for pc because after that the quality kind of dips because they're pumping them out quicker and quicker to, to coincide with the movies and uh and it just they the quality dips and they're trying to be more based on the movies stuff like that so definitely definitely glad to have this in my collection though uh beyond that there's just a handful of games left uh all playstation stuff and as you can see behind me i did end up getting another uh shelving unit here so i could spread things out a little bit more and put my small box and jewel case pc games up on the shelf here but the biggest reason why i got another unit to spread things out was the PlayStation section. Having all that crammed into just two columns down at the end there, I was really running out of space. And uh, as I added more games to my PlayStation collection, then I really needed more space. So these things, yeah, they're the reason why. Uh, specifically, I got uh, on the PS4. Whoop, hold on. Sorry, my little privacy flap of paper fell down. <laughs> on the PS4, I got Valkyria Chronicles 4. I still need to get Valkyria Chronicles Remastered uh as well but uh i looked it up because i was kind of curious what happened to valkyria chronicles 3 because valkyria chronicles 1 was on the uh, ps3 valkyria chronicles 2 was on the psp and i have both of those what happened to valkyria chronicles 3 was valkyria chronicles remastered considered part of that what about valkyria revolution no revolution is just considered a spin-off uh no, Valkyria Chronicles 3 was another PSP game. It just it never made it to the West. So definitely glad to have this in my collection. Now, I still got to get Revolution and uh, and uh, Remastered in order to have the complete collection on PS4. But definitely glad to have this. Uh, I also picked up God of War 3 Remastered. And uh, yes, this was a PS3 game, which was quote-unquote in HD. However, I looked and the original game... Uh, only outputs up to, I believe, 720p, maybe 1080i. Let me double check that real quick. Uh, God of War 3, where are you? There you are. Yeah, video output 480p, 720p, 1080i. So this is in full 1080p. And for those of you who are kind of confused by the numbers and the I and P, that just refers to how the screen is rendered uh basically how the image is rendered on the screen i is interlaced where uh basically you've got one frame that is every other line and then a second frame that is the missing information so it kind of alternates back and forth that's why uh, a lot of uh, uh stuff when played on a crt kind of flickers a little bit because it's, it's interlaced uh, whereas p is progressive where it draws the entire screen all at once <coughs> excuse me sorry all right so definitely, definitely glad to have this. Uh, so now I have all God of War releases except for the Saga collection on PS3, which is God of War, God of War 2, God of War 3, and both PSP games all remastered uh, except for God of War 3 on the PS3. That's the only God of War release I'm currently missing. Uh, of course, I'm also missing Ragnarok, 
but that's not out yet. So, and there's rumors right now that that may not be PS5 exclusive, that that might actually be coming to PS4 as well. So, we'll see what happens there. Uh, another PS4 game I got was Catherine Full Body. I got the PS4 version of this instead of any of the others because the original Catherine I got on PS3 as well. Eventually, I'll get the 360 version, but I... I got it on PS3, and honestly, I don't know if I'm ever actually going to play through this. Uh, this has more content than the original. They added a third romanceable character, Rin, here, who uh, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with her. I think I heard that she might be transgender, but I'm not entirely sure. I just know that there was uh, a character in the original who was trans, uh, but it was kind of played off as a joke. And I don't know if that's the same character or not. I want to say it might be because that character was uh, pink-haired as well. But uh, anyways, it's it, it gets a little weird and it's not always the best representation. But I'm, I'm interested in playing it and seeing what else, else is different. But this is a game where the story really kind of depends on your choices throughout the game. on Especially like who to romance and who to end up with and stuff like that. So I'm not entirely uh, sure... If I'm going to play through it, because usually when it comes to games like that, I usually don't end up making the different decisions uh, unless I'm specifically aiming to do that. And it's been long enough. I can't even remember what my original decisions were. So I might end up with something different. I might end up with something similar. I don't know. We'll see. But beyond that, I did also pick up Near Replicant version 1.22474487139 dot 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 or ellipsis if you want to say uh, this is actually still sealed i haven't opened this yet uh because i've been playing other games instead um i'm really interested in the near games uh i have the original release of near on both the ps3 and the 360 i have near automata the game of the yorha edition uh which is like the complete edition on ps4 and now i have near replicant the thing about near is that uh when this game was originally released, it was a PS3 game in Japan. And it there were two different versions in Japan. You had Near Replicant on the PS3, and you had Near Gestalt on the Xbox 360. And it was basically just two flavors of the same game, where it's kind of the same story. Uh, just whereas in Near Replicant, you're playing as the brother of the uh, character that you're trying to save. And in Near Gestalt, you're playing as the father of the character that you're trying to save. And there were uh, uh, aesthetic differences as well, whereas near Gestalt was more what we would think of as a typical Western AAA game at, from the era, and near Replicant was much more anime-fied. And the thing is, when they brought near over to the West, they had designed near Gestalt with a Western audience in mind, and they decided instead of bringing both versions over, they would port near Gestalt over to the PS3 from the 360, and then they would uh, run. They would release Nier Gestalt as just Nier um, on both platforms in the West. So we never got Nier Replicant until this uh, remaster here. So I am interested in playing this. I'm probably going to start with this one since it's the most recent release. And it uh, Nier Automata is a sequel to this. Uh, so definitely try this out at some point. I just haven't decided exactly when yet because there's a lot of stuff on my radar right now. Speaking of which, the last two games uh, were on my radar for a while. This one kind of slipped under for a bit. Returnal. A lot of people, I think, were sleeping on this game. Really, really good. It's, it's a AAA roguelike game. It's a third-person shooter with bullet hell elements. Really, really good. Um, I ran into a, a bit of trouble actually picking this up. Uh, I actually did the same with, with uh, Nier Automata where I went to pick this up the day it came out and... Uh, couldn't find it. <laughs> I couldn't find it. I went to Best Buy. I couldn't find it. Didn't feel like shopping around, so I just left it at that. Next week, uh, Returnal comes out. I go to pick that up. Best Buy doesn't have it. They didn't get a single copy of Returnal for release date. They have it now, but they didn't get a single copy of Returnal for release date. But they had Near Replicant, so I went ahead and I bought that. But I really wanted uh, Returnal, and I only had so much time. I couldn't just shop around, shop around. So I headed over to Walmart. There was a, a, a Walmart like real close by Best Buy. So I went over there. They had three copies of Returnal. And they told me they, they'd only gotten like a handful of copies. So I don't know what Sony was thinking. Like if they thought they would just do way more sales digitally for this. Or if they thought it was just going to fly under so many people's radar. Why bother printing huge amounts? But really, really hard to get the, a copy of this. But um, really, really enjoyed it. Really interesting story that leaves more questions uh, unresolved than answered by the end of it. And yes, I did get the secret ending. That doesn't like really clear up anything. <laughs> it is still really ambiguous at the end of like what's actually going on. 
yeah, you've got suspicions and stuff like that. But yeah, one of the big things, one of the big problems I have with this game is there is no uh, internal save feature. It's it's a roguelike. Basically, you're intended to uh, do a run and then die and then start over from the beginning with uh, only your knowledge and maybe a couple, a handful of permanent upgrades to push you even further on the next run. And, and so you keep going and keep going. And uh, unfortunately, the runs for this game can last anywhere from five to ten minutes to two or three hours, even longer, possibly. And uh, sometimes when you ha are an adult and you have a life, you don't always have time to sit down for hours on end because pretty much when you sit down with this game, you have to make a commitment. Okay, I'm going to play this for a couple hours because there's no save function in this game otherwise. When you start a run, you are in that run until it's over. And uh, yeah, you, you can uh, pause it by putting the, the PS5 into rest mode but that's not always that's a that's a workaround that is a stopgap workaround not an actual fix because if you lose power you know if somebody unplugs your ps5 you lose power something happens and it turns off you lose all that progress if you want to play a different game you have to back out of it you lose all that progress if you uh if you uh get caught unprepared by an update for the game you lose all progress because there's no save function in the game except for certain milestones uh, in the, the story, like uh, uh, certain unlocks, uh, permanent upgrades and stuff like that. That's the only stuff that's saved between runs. And if you lose a run, it's over. And this game is still quite a bit buggy and glitchy. Uh, I played this game for days and didn't encounter a single bug or glitch until I was getting to the last couple areas and then all of a sudden I was getting crashes where it would freeze up it would hard lock my console and I had to manually uh reset my my system in order to get it to run again and I've had glitches where audio just completely cut out just completely utterly cut out no audio I could still play but there was no audio so I couldn't hear anything so that kind of sucked as well However, a PS5 game that plays near flawlessly and really, really good and really, really beautiful is Resident Evil Village or Resident Evil 8 Village. I'm still confused on whether it's supposed to be Resident Evil 8 or 7.1 because th this is a continuation of Resident Evil 7 in terms of story. And the way they have the logo here with the, the Roman numerals hidden in here, they've got just enough separation between the, the two L's that it does it does look like it's supposed to be 7.1 and not 8. But I don't know. We'll see whenever they announce the next one. Did I definitely really enjoyed this. Some people are saying it's too short. Dude, guys, if you're if you're exploring and you're playing through this your first time, you have no idea what to expect. It's a 10 to 12 hour game. Like I got through this in about 10 and a half hours, and that's not that's the in game's internal runtime. That doesn't count the point where I ended up uh, missing out on something and ended up replaying a uh, uh, a two-hour chunk of the game just because I missed out on something I didn't want to miss out on. So I ended up picking up this. And again, this is a game where I couldn't find it at Best Buy. For some reason, they had no copies of the PS5 version. Granted, I didn't ask if they still had any in the back. They just hadn't sent them out yet. But I had already... They had a uh, number of the PS4 versions and a number of Xbox versions but they didn't have the PS5. So I ended up having to go to Walmart to pick it up. And they said they only got a handful of, of copies of the PS5 version as well. So I don't know if that's something on Sony's end then where they're just not producing enough PS5 discs. I don't understand why because they've they've already sold a huge number of PS5s, but I, I don't know. Either way, that is it for this collection update. Uh, that is everything I've got now. Next one's probably going to be several months off because I'm expecting a Steam sale to come up soon. And I do want to get some things on that. But uh, yeah, until then, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe.